Hi, my name is Imani. I'm a writer and astrologer and welcome to the December challenge. Every day on Month Long, we are talking about Sinistry on this channel only. And today we are talking about Moon in the 8th house Sinistry, okay? This is a very interactive challenge. I have a video on Instagram. I have a video on TikTok. I'm posting on Twitter. It's all the platforms, okay? Follow me on everything, but you can drop your comments under those videos or under this video. Any question that you have about Sinistry, okay? We're answering all questions all December long because Sinistry is my favorite topic. I love talking about Sinistry. It's the best part of astrology. I mean, what, what fun is astrology if you can't mix and match to find your crush? It's like love is what makes the world go round. And for some people, it may not be love. It may just be like, that's okay. But the point is humans need connection. We need to stop acting like that's not what we want because that is what we want and let's just embrace it so yeah we're talking about synastry <laughs> i'm so happy to talk about going to the eighth house because i am an eighth house stellium the eighth house is all i know <laughs> it's all i've lived so and the best part also is like i also have had the moon in the eighth house overlay with someone <sighs> gotta take a deep breath because it was deep the eighth house is deep okay it's not for the weak the eighth house this is the second water sign ruled house in the zodiac okay so when you think about the water signs with three water signs cancer scorpio pisces those naturally rule over houses as well that's going to be the fourth house respective to cancer the eighth house which is respective to scorpio 12th house which is respected to Pisces so when we think about the 8th house we're also kind of thinking about the birthplace of Scorpio this is where Scorpio was raised this was her environment you know this is a very raw connection very deep very intimate very vulnerable right off the bat and usually it's kind of a red flag when it's too vulnerable in the beginning because it's like are you just like luring me into this safe space which if you're not used to eighth house energy or Scorpio energy or even Pluto or Mars energy in your own natal chart, when you meet someone and have this overlay with them, your trust issues come up like that. Like even if you felt like you were a pretty secure person before that, a lot of deep hidden things will start to rise to the surface. Deep wounds, childhood traumas, that's what the 8th house deals with. Okay, it's getting good, it's getting good, it's getting good. <laughs> but with Moon in the 8th house overlay, when you guys meet and are with each other alone for the first time, it's like you almost, like from both parties, from the Moon house, from the Moon person's perspective, and from the house person's perspective, it's like you can't help but divulge your true self to this person because you kind of already feel like when they look at you there's nothing is hidden they see everything they see your flaws but then there's also an acceptance that comes with that and that's what makes the moon in eighth house overlay one of the strongest bonds that you can make just just having it i don't want this to feel like the other moon overlays don't have a strong of a bond but when we think about how humans in general, what or energetic makeup is about, it's about connection. And in this society, a lot of people connect through being able to understand each other's struggles. This is not the same as trauma bonding, okay? Trauma bonding, which in some aspects, the moon in the eighth house overlay can get carried away and there could be some elements of trauma bonding within a relationship that has this overlay but not as a rule okay it doesn't automatically mean that this is a trauma bond you know what i'm saying each individual in their own life outside of astrology has to know what traumas they have and how they've dealt with it if you've been repressing and not dealing with things when you come upon someone with this overlay that's what can make it very karmic because the eighth house again 
nothing is hidden so when this house is highlighted within your life be prepared to go through some major changes major transformations if you're more on a healing journey when you come upon this overlay you can reap a lot more of the positive attributes of this connection when both parties are able to be completely honest with each other that is going to create even more of a stronger bond than understanding each other through struggles so okay yeah i was explaining the difference between trauma bonding and being able to understand where each other struggles because when you understand struggles you're also understanding where this person came from when someone feels like they don't have to explain or translate something that they feel is a core part of who they are when they meet someone that kind of just gets that there is that sense of familiarity and safety that you automatically kind of lock into not all successful relationships need this component but when you do have this component it can create a very solid very secure feeling a lot of the positive attributes that come from this overlay actually affects more the others around you than you guys themselves when you meet someone and you're on a healing journey you're both on a healing journey and you're able to really dig deep in the themes of the eighth house honesty intimacy when people see the dynamic of this between you two it reverberates and has the power to change the collective energy and how they view relationships so this is powerful stuff this is powerful energy it's deep it's deep a lot of the time though when people encounter this overlay there are still things that we need to work through everyone is still healing healing isn't linear all that all that stuff you know but i think we should always if you do end up having this overlay with someone it's always a great opportunity for self-reflection do deep healing for yourself but the fun part about the eighth house outside of all that like heavy stuff <laughs> the connection feels like fire on your soul when you guys are around each other it's like physically you cannot everything turns you on about them and again that's from the moon person's end and also the eighth person's end like there's always this very thick sexual tension between you guys it's like the chemistry is, is buzzing buzzing eye contact is super important here like <laughs> When you guys make eye contact, it's like, it's over, it's done. Something that makes the energy of the moon in 8th house overlay feel really special is just, it, it feels like nothing you've ever experienced before. It keeps you on your toes, sometimes in a bad way where you kind of feel like you're going crazy over the other person, but I feel like mostly in a good way where it's more like those butterflies that you get. It's like seeing it's like a crush no matter how long you've been with this person it always feels it has that renewed sense of like and you know they say <laughs> i don't know who they is but they say that the key to a long marriage is a good sex life okay and moon in the eighth house they're gonna have that for sure i feel like this is one that i can honestly talk about forever but i'm gonna stop it there <laughs> thank you for being here um i can't say that enough <laughs> Once I finish out the moon overlays and all the houses, I'll start with Mars in the 4th, Mars in the 12th, go through all the rest of the Mars signs, then I'm going to go through Venus overlays. That's going to be kind of the schedule. Keep that in mind. Feel free to still drop any question about anything in Sinistry so that you can start to put yourself in the queue, okay? I'm so excited. Catch you at the next one. <laughs>